Welcome to the Planning Committee on the 7th of March 2023. Um, if we just proceed with the agenda as read, uh, apologies for any absence, I've received none. Okay, we have a, one councillor missing, so we'll, we'll just press on. Uh, minutes of the previous meetings, so that if you'll notice in the pack there are two sets of minutes in the previous meeting, one for the 7th of February and one for the 17th of January. Can I have a move and a seconder? Councillor Godall, Councillor Price, thank you very much. Uh, are there any declarations of interest? Fantastic. So to that end, we'll move on to the uh, application for, uh, for this evening, and that is the uh, 02062021 former co-op garage, Bonehill Road, Tamworth. And I will hand, o hand over to uh, Glenn to do the slides. Thank you very much. Thank you, Chair. So yes, it's Bonehill Road. Um, the proposals remain unchanged from the February committee. Um, as we remember from that meeting, we discovered that the um, address was uh, stated was wrong. So we've now we advertised the application to show the correct address and to review any submissions made um, based on this. We've also checked the council T's responded based on the plans submitted and not obviously gone off the address that was stated on the application form. We've had no objections um, since the, um, yeah, the address has been changed and people have been notified and consultees have responded to the correct site. Uh, we've also used this opportunity to include all the verbal updates from the previous meeting into the new report. And so it's nice and clean and provides all the relevant information. So onto the site then. This is a former co-op garage site. Um, it's been vacant for a few years. Um, Google uh, Street View suggests it's been closed since around 2017-18. Um, situated at the end of Lady Bridge, a grade two listed structure and quite close to the castle and the conservation area. Adjacent um, is also to the to this river and castle grounds beyond and a view to the castle itself um, and with open uh, floodplain to the north and existing housing at the south of Highbroom Court in this area down here. So it's adjacent to currently a site of nine dwellings under construction, well in the way I believe. Um, the scheme has had a few revisions uh, from the initial submission and then moved from the houses um, to the apartments and now we're looking at 11 houses, um, I think it was 12, 13 initially and the layout is now in pairs and um, with parking spaces provided. So, sorry Councillor Daniels, um, you, you're, you're late and we've already started and we, we can't really go back. Um, you'd just like to sit down in public gallery, please? Thank you. Sorry, Glenn, if you might just carry on. Thank you. No problem. And there's also a bit of a change to the corner property here. I think it's been over side of the corner property, and we just tweaked the um, design of that slightly. Elevations, um, here we go. So, the um, again, these have been changed slightly. They are now, again, two story with dormer roofs um, in the front. Brick and tile um, materials, but these will be subject to conditions. Um, so we'll ask for these to be submitted at a later stage. So considerations then, um, onto the principle first. Uh, the housing is acceptable because we've allocated the site in the local plan. Um, Jeff just shown the excerpt of the local plan here to show you where you where you'll see it. Identifying obviously this land is identified um, for for development, and that's the previous site. As I say, there were nine dwellings uh, one under construction at the minute, and the garage site is the one we're looking at tonight. The proposed development is a redundant brownfield site, so very much consistent with the advice in the MPPF to obviously um, prioritise that land for for development. Mm -hmm. Uh, local plan policy HG4 and um, just state that we need to provide two units of affordable um, accommodation. However, this has been um, found to be a viability issue for the applicant. So when this happens, they need to submit information to prove that it's unviable and that needs to be reviewed, which has been duly conducted by the district valuers office. And they have agreed that providing the two um, affordable units would be unviable and therefore they have um, yeah, submitted information that we now deem acceptable and they do not need to provide the affordable housing um, as normally required by the policy. And also they have um, said that they can't afford the full contribution for, for the education, education contributions and again that is uh, deemed to be acceptable because the viability report has suggested that that is the case. They will still have to provide the, um, the relevant uh, SIL amount. The dwelling mix, so we're looking at predominantly three bedroom units, which again, ideally we would ask for a few more two beds, but generally as three beds are in high demand in Tamworth, we have identified that that would largely conform to policy HG5. 
And again, dwelling density on the low side at 34 uh, dwellings per hectare. But again, because of the open space that's around the site and within it, we feel that you know, generally it meets that criteria. So overall, we have a scheme that's acceptable in terms of housing policy. We've reviewed it against the SPD on design. The proposal has adequate garden sizes, enough parking provision, good distance to boundaries, and presents no overlooking uh, or privacy issues to those living nearby. The design is in keeping with the relevant street scene. Again, I've got a picture of that somewhere. I think it's around here. No, sorry. These are elevations, but uh, yeah, the um, relevant design is deemed to be acceptable in terms of what's around the local area. The flood um, risks have all been seen to be acceptable by the lead flood uh, authority and by the EA also state no objections to the, the application, subject to a number of conditions which are set out in the report. Highways, highways there's no objections from Staffordshire Highways Department and biodiversity net gain and the proposal obviously being on brownfield site there's unlikely to be um, you know a high quality um, living environment for habitats and wildlife but there are obviously elements of landscape imposed with the development and there is a number of measures in the Hodge report, uh, 12 of them, in fact, that provide some evidence that they will provide some net gain to ecology living or residing nearby. So in conclusion then, we have a proposal that is acceptable in policy terms, as I say, it's allocated site on brownfield land within a sustainable location. Heritage issues have been addressed, no significant um, problems here, and we've obviously got conditions on materials to make sure that the proposal truly blends in with the local area. Design is of high quality, and as required by EN5 of the local plan. Highways and drainage matters have all been addressed, subject to relevant conditions. And yet, therefore, the scheme, in our mind, accords with relevant plan policy and the MPPF and recommended to approval, subject to uh, education contributions and relevant conditions as uh, indicated in the report. Thank you. Thank you very much, Glenn. As always, fantastic presentation. Um, do we have any questions for the officers, please? I think Councillor Maycock was first. Cheers, Chair. Somebody's got the mic. Um. Uh, somebody else. Is that on? Yeah. Um, you, you were saying in, in the introduction that uh, the feasibility that they didn't have to pay education, uh, but then in the last bit you just said that that's a condition that they have to. It was reduced contribution. I think uh, Staffordshire wanted more, but they can provide just a little bit more. Yeah, £35 per square metre, isn't it, I think? The sill, there's the education contribution, I think it was about 10,000 something. Yeah, it's in the report. Yeah. Thank you, uh, Councillor Claymore. Well, great minds think alike, Councillor Maycock. That was my question. Fantastic, thank you, Councillor Claymore. Uh, do we have any other questions, Councillor Thurgood? Right, okay. Um, the parking arrangements, is it, um, are we happy that there are sufficient spaces um, for the 11 properties that we have there? Yep, that's been confirmed by the uh, Staffordshire Highways Department that yes, there is sufficient parking for the okay. development. And the uh, entrance onto the site, um, should people start parking on the side of the road, will there be enough room for emergency vehicles? Um, Refuse collection. Yes, I understand again that the establishment have checked all the measurements. They meet their standards, and yeah, I believe that would be, uh, be satisfactory. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Glenn. Uh, one final question, if I may. Um, flood protection. Is there any uh, embankments um, planned for the site? And there's a series of conditions, again, relating to flood risk and flood management, um, management ongoing to make sure that, yeah, there is no sufficient um, detriment to flood issues um, going forward with the site. So there are no uh, planned berms or anything? No, I believe so, no. No, thank you. Councillor Harper. Thank you, Chair. Um, just to check that we will be having an architectural survey done of the site prior to any building work being undertaken. Um, there were a, a series of um, Victorian, Georgian houses, terraced houses on this site prior, prior to the 1960s. 
and um, so presumably those are going to be there. But there's um, there's also possible evidence of other stuff. Uh, is yep. this going to be undertaken? Of course, yeah. Condition 8 that requires prior to commencement development and um, scheme of archaeological investigation shall take place. Thank you. Are there no more questions then from... No? Okay, so we move swiftly on to the debate. Councillor Goddard to kick off. Thank, thank you, Chair. <clears throat> Yeah, I, I see no reason uh, not to approve this development. Um, it's right next to an exist uh, development that's just been just been started, and, and as Glenn rightly says, it's it's making good progress. Um, I think it's a quality development. It's an enhancement to the area, and it's um, you know we, we we've seen this site derelict for uh, for a number of years now, and. Um, yeah, I'm, I'll be honest, I'm, I'm quite happy to, to move it now. Okay, okay thank you, uh, Councillor Goddard. That's a mover. Uh, seconder, Councillor Summers, thank you very much. We do have uh, Councillor Claymore uh, that wants to come in on the debate. Thank you. Thank you, Chair. Um, yeah, the positives on this, yeah, it does fit in with the local plan. Um, it's great that it's taken up a brownfield site, which I think is fantastic. I just want to say how disappointed I am that there's no affordable housing on there. Um, I do understand that, you know, the reasons that you've, you've um, given to us, but I just wanted to say that I'm really disappointed about that. Uh, anybody else? Councillor Harper, thank you. Uh, yeah, basically, I, I'm, I'm very happy with this scheme. I think it will enhance the area. Um, it's, as, as Councillor Goodall said, it's been derelict and messy for, a, well, probably 20 years. And um, these look to be good quality houses. I think that's the thing that we should be... Um, looking for is to um, to build some quality housing in Tamworth. Um, presumably the materials, the brick and um, tiling is going to be um, harmonious with that that already exists in the area and um, if that is so I can't see any reason why this isn't uh, going to be a splendid uh, addition to the town. Thank you. Okay, so we have a mover and a seconder. Um, have we exhausted the debate? Seems so. Should we take a vote on that then? Okay, all in favour? Fantastic. Thank you very much. With that, um, another quick meeting. I'll close the meeting at 18.14. Thank you very much. Thank you, guys. <coughs>